Good morning, y'all. I shared with y'all recently that I uh, started reading Blood Meridian or listening to Blood Meridian on script. Well, I finished Blood Meridian last night and I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know how many of y'all are, uh, you know, fans of American authors, um, fans of Faulkner. If you're a fan of Faulkner, you're going to be, I'm assuming, a fan of Cormac McCarthy. Um, so I told you guys before I read No Country for Old Men. I read it after I saw the movie, I believe. Uh, and the movie is one of the rare movies that follows the book closely, which is what makes the, the movie so good. I hate when you watch a movie and it's based on a book and the book is awesome and the movie deviates from the book so much that it's like, eh, they should have stayed closer to what the author intended. But No Country for Old Men is one of those movies and books that are so close together that, you know, to me, that's why the movie is so great. Um, I haven't watched the movie Blood Meridian. It would be very hard to put that movie, that book into film, just kind of like it was hard to put Beloved, you know, Toni Morrison's Beloved into film. I know Oprah tried, but it's, it's just, you know, Toni Morrison's books always have this kind of otherworldly fe feature that's, that's hard to capture on film. Um, there's always some kind of like divination in it. But anyway, <sighs> Blood Meridian. So before Blood Meridian, before me reading this book, I just finished The Road. And that's what made me want to read Blood Meridian was, I, I haven't read anything with Cormac McCarthy's that just hasn't been phenomenal. So I was like, okay, well, let me read this because it's supposed to be his best work. Oh my goodness, y'all. If you took the character of Judge Holden and put him in today's, like compare him by today's standards, he's what we would call a narcissistic psychopath. Um, where do I begin? Where do I begin? He is a serial, you know, uh, R-warder, serial K-warder, that you know just this man's gonna impose his will on everyone else at all costs especially at the cost of your life um eventually it's at everyone's life your life is gonna be what's gonna be taken but your body will be taken first you know and you know this book so any y'all that haven't read blood meridian if you really like dense text, if you like, again, if you like Faulkner, if you like American writers that are, you know, I would encourage you to read it. But as I'm, as I read this and I finished it and I'm thinking, it just, <laughs> uh, I feel like at the end, I, you know, I, don't, I really don't want to give any spoilers though for you, to, you know, you all that want to read it. But you ever like go somewhere and you see someone that you know like you have a history with and you know that that person is so vile so bad so inherently evil that if they see you first like if you see them before they see you you turn around and pray to god they don't see you and you leave that place immediately that's what i pray for the boy in that movie in in, in this in this book that i wish he had seen him first so he could have turned around but i feel like even though he didn't see him first to me as soon as it's as soon as he saw him and he you know they talked and he walked away instead of him going to do what he did i wish he had got out of dodge you know so to speak so y'all this book is set you know in the 1800s um it, it's it's the story of basically the i, I hate to say the wild west but you know it follows the story of this group of bandits, basically, who are collecting the scalps of uh, Indians or Native Americans for pay. Um, basically, uh, oh, you trying to get over? My bad, dog. You can get over. I didn't know. Um, for pay. And there's this man in the book that's like kind of a renaissance man. He... Like there's nothing he doesn't know how to do. He got, you know what? He kind of reminds me of Hannibal Lecter. He's like a, a 1800s version of Hannibal Lecter almost. Like 
he he's smart he's intelligent he can walk circle he can like he can talk circles around you his his vocabulary he's outmatched against anyone he speaks other languages he, he's just smart you know and he's definitely a leader and no no one that kind of comes under his leadership is is well matched for him in any way and it's sad when anyone ever thinks they are you know it doesn't end well for them um he's like to me he's like the devil incarnate you know like in in person you know but when i when i started thinking about it i was like girl he's just a narcissist and and really a he's just psychopathic he, he literally has antisocial personality disorder like if you could take him and and a dsm-5 and look you know just kind of go down the list of the nine things that make you know someone have narcissistic personality disorder or make someone have antisocial personality disorder that's him so you guys know like uh, you know i've said this before psychopathy or sociopathy those things aren't you know listed as disorders it's antisocial personality disorder and i'm driving right now of course so i can't list those things out you know but the the lack of empathy uh the lack of conscious or the lack of you know morality um the you know all, all these things that make up those social disorders are there and, and he's gonna exert his will over you at any cost. It does not matter what you feel. And that, you know, it, and it, he really kind of embodies that spirit of the wild west of, you know, killing to accomplish what your goals are. And it, the reason that I, I brought it up as far as comparing it to today's issues is when I thought about him and his lack of morals and his lack of empathy and his lack of being able to see the world from anyone else's point of view, I, I thought of like all the run-ins I've had lately with narcissists over the years, especially since I've been back home and the way he explains life as the way he sees it and how to him there's no arguing, truth doesn't matter, none of that matters. All that matters is what he wants and his will. And you either acquiesce to that or you die. You know, you either acquiesce to what he wants, um, or if you don't, he's gonna force his will on you and you die. You know what I mean? It's like, that, that that's all that matters is what he wants. No one cares what you want, you know? It's what he wants. He's the, he's the greater person, you know? He doesn't care what you were, uh, what you thought you were, what, what you thought the two of you were, what relationship you had, none of that. You're gonna do what he wants, or that's it. There, there is no or. You're gonna do what he wants, you know. And it's like, wow. It, like, it, oh my gosh. I just, I, I, you know, I really wish I had the time, or I wish I had made the time to sit down with, you know, the criteria for both of these disorders to talk about how they line up, you know. But I just like literally had this epiphany driving to work, you know, thinking about this, like. I, I was thinking about the similarities between he and the narcissist that I've discovered, you know, lately, like that's that, you know, there's, so the other character in the book that he exerts his will over, we don't even know the character's name, but he's just called the boy. And the boy is a kind of live and let live. If he sees something wrong, he won't, Whoa, what is going on here? Everybody's out of the building. Jeez, this is interesting. Uh, is this character called the boy and he won't he, he just lives and let lives if he's told to do something as part of his job he'll do it even if he knows it's not right he'll do it you know because it's still part of his job but he doesn't like doing anything that's wrong you know and so they're really supposed to just be killing the violent Indians you know like the Apaches or stuff like that but then they start killing the Indians that are peaceful tribes too because they're gonna get money for the scalps regardless. And Judge Holden is the one who decides to do this. Like, we'll, we'll kill them. It doesn't matter if they're peaceful or not, we're still gonna get paid for it. And it, again, that compromising of ethics that, you know, as long as I get my money, as long as I get paid, I don't care who gets hurt in the process, you know? Uh, you know, collateral damage kind of thing, so.
interesting. So anyway, y'all, I'm at the office. I will holler at y'all later, but you know, any of y'all that have read Blood Marine or plan to read it or have tried to read it, let me know what you think. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye.